Okay, let's get started. We have tons to talk about today. So I'm going to hide this, hide floating meeting controls. Let's get this mouse highlight on. Can everyone see this little blue mouse highlight so I can showcase where I'm clicking? I just want to make sure that that's pretty easily visible. Let me know if that is the case. Awesome. Okay, so today, um, and just a reminder, uh, I'll make sure to remind everyone of this too. Uh, just use that promo code if you're looking to purchase ACDC or one of ACDC's products, it'll give you $20 off. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about eight um, tools within manage mode. And these tools are very powerful because they enable us to either make batch actions or actions that are expedited dramatically in the sense that it, this is going to be uh, elements of ACDC that can save you a lot of time. And um, I'm just going to assume no familiarity within manage mode. And we'll talk about these things uh, each individually and, um, uh, and uh, so you can get a better understanding. But in essence, I'm gonna open up this folder here that I have in uh, manage mode. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about is actually batch renaming. So batch renaming was improved, actually, let's go into this one because a whole bunch of images that I recently uh, took on my, with my phone camera and I used mobile sync to move them over. And they all have just like silly uh, number names currently, I think based on whatever the phone criteria is. So what we can do is we can go through the process of actually renaming all these files. So batch rename is one of the many batch options. So batch is located up on the top menu in manage mode. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different functions. You can batch export, batch develop, batch edit, batch rename, resize, convert file format, rotate flip. These are really powerful tools because it allows you to select all or some or uh, any amount of your images. Um, and then, uh, and then go through the process of uh, doing any of these functions with renaming being the one that we're going to talk about principally right now. I saw your question, Norman. Um, just FYI for all questions, just fire them in the Q&A. Um, so mobile sync is a uh, application for your smartphone that is downloadable for free on um, Google Play or uh, the uh, Apple App Store. And so what it does is it enables you to take photos on your phone and then when you get home, you can just go through the process of moving those images over quickly without having to plug your phone in or use some sort of Google Drive or something like that to transition them over. So basically, it's just a really fast way to move those files. So you can find that, like I said, on those, those platforms. So that's what I did. I just took these photos on my phone and I moved them over. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to batch and I'm going to go to batch rename right here. So this is a super powerful tool <laughs> and it, it only got more powerful. It's a little bit, um, there's a lot going on and it, I can see how it might be a confusing, at least for, for new users, but it's quite simple. And, and basically what it, it asks of the user is uh, it creates this sort of uh, six steps that you can run through. Um, and in this case, these six steps are, uh, I guess, cumulative in the sense that the template will be applied first, and then you can search and replace after that. You can change the case, pardon me. You can insert new text, you can remove text, and then you can strip spaces from whatever your uh, uh, template, initial template is. So what this does is enables us to do some pretty cool things. So in the case of these mobile, uh, mobile these smartphone photos, why don't we just change the naming convention altogether? So we'll start with the template. So this template enables me to create some sort of new naming function. So I'm gonna call these smartphone. Um, uh, most of these photos were taken in Victoria, but all of them were taken in Canada. So maybe I'll do Canada. And then what I can do is I can enter like a number, for example, so literally a number sign. And what that number sign uh, will indicate is the, if you look over here on the right, It'll show you the current name and then the new name that's going to be applied to all of our images, which looks like there's a total of 50 in this folder. So what it does here is it'll literally go 001, 002, 003, all the way up to 50, 
dependent on the number of pound signs that I put into the template. So in the case that I put four pound signs, for example, it'll be uh, 0001 all the way up to 0050, which enables me to sort of see um, how that naming convention works. You can also notice too that there is actually an ACDC file among these JPEGs. So all of these files for the most part are JPEG files, but one is already uh, an ACDC file, one that I've already edited. And it can apply that same naming convention to even a file that has a different file type. So there's other options within this template function. I can insert specific metadata. So um, what would be a good example of that? Let's just add one. I'll go into insert metadata. And then let's see here if we could add, yeah, because all of these photos were taken with a, a smartphone so that GPS would be tracked. So I could probably add, I could do add something like latitude and longitude if I wanted to. And I think this should be applied. Yeah, so it, in this case, I'm not gonna actually add this information, but just so you can see what metadata can be added, it actually showcases it right there. So I probably need to put in some form of space or hyphen here. And by adding that hyphen that I can see when the number of the image stops and the latitude and longitude uh, are applied. So there's tons of different metadata that you can add that might be relevant to your, your naming conventions. Um, so, but I just keep that in mind. And then the other thing too, is you don't necessarily have to be, uh, uh, to be, if you already have a naming convention that is like letters, for example, I don't know why you would, but in the case that you are, you can use letters instead of uh, num uh, numbers in this case to sort through your images. And then um, you can start at a values that are not one, uh, right? So what you can do is you can actually start at higher numbers. And this is relevant when you already have a naming convention um, within your fol folder, and then you're adding new images to it. And so you scroll down to the bottom of your folder and you see that your last image is like, I don't know, let's say 102. Well, then you can start at 103. And then what I'm seeing here is that Smartphone Canada 103 starts and it goes all the way to 152. So this gives me the ability to uh, sort of control when the starting number is. And Ronnie asked, can you put the number first? Yeah, of course you can. Actually, it's super simple. What I would do is I would take these pound signs and I would literally just put them at the start of the template. In my case, what I would probably want to do is do three instead because there's only uh, 50 images in here. But as you can see, that apply that is now affects my um, my new my new naming convention. Uh, Bruno asked, with template, is there a way to keep the original numbers from the original name? I think that if you auto detect the original number, uh, then it should uh, check to see what that number is, and then that number will be applied. And this probably isn't relevant in my case. Uh, it might be. Oh, no, it is actually. That's pretty cool. So if we just reference here, right? So our first image in our, um, our folder is 202548, and it can actually reference that. So by auto detecting, it goes 202548. Uh, and starts there and looks like goes up depending. So this is a super powerful tool and we've only done the first step of it, which is to change the template name. So the other thing we can do, uh, for example, is we can, um, we can sort of move these elements up or down depending on what we want to apply first. So say we wanna do a case change before we wanna search and replace. So what I can do is I can take this case change category and I can click this up button and what you can see is now it'll be applied secondarily in this tier. So I have to click the OK button there and we're making a case change. And instead of uh, this having a uh, capitalization, maybe I'll want to make it all low lowercase. So I, in essence, I can force a case on my image titles, lowercase, uppercase, um, title case, no case, that sort of thing. And then I can also change the case of my extension. So in the case of my .jpg or .acdc file, I can make those all um, uh, capitals if I wanted to. And this is basically just to match whatever current convention you already have in your uh, um, in your system. You know, whatever you're using currently, you can sort of match that. What I can also do is uh, we so let's move. We don't even have to apply search and replace. Excuse me, or insert text. We can skip right ahead to remove text. Um, and what I can do is I can actually just remove 
uh, an entire, uh, oops, I can remove an entire uh, position. So I can start from position one and uh, remove until position uh, three, for example. And by doing so, it actually gets rid of my number convention that I've added. Uh, not necessarily what I want in this case, but it does give me the ability to uh, get remove things. So what happens if I want to remove smartphone? Maybe, uh, is it case seven here? Let's see here. Oh yeah, no, it's, so let's go P H. Oh, so um, there we go. So I can remove phone by setting the start position at 10 and the uh, remove until five. So phone being five letters long, this removes it from the order. Alan asked, I tried to number photos taken sequentially and ACDC numbered the photos out of order. Is that because you used the auto detect, Alan? Uh, is there any way that a photo can be numbered sequentially in the order they were taken with the timestamp and the metadata? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think what you'd have to do is, well, I mean, what you could do is you could add the metadata. Mm, um, if that uh, metadata is, is, is something you can add using insert metadata. And then what you can do is you can reference that for the template itself. Um, I see. Because, okay, so it, say, I don't know if that's a file property. That's the, uh, I don't know what that would be under if it was under, I guess, date taken because that's what you want. You just want the, uh, da, 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 da. Mm. So you could try, um, you could try adding the date itself. Um, and then, so what you could do is I guess created date. Uh, let's see if that works. Yeah, so you could add that, and then it, based on whatever information it's provided you, you could add that number into your templating. So you could start at that value. Um, but uh, that's what maybe I would suggest is referencing whatever metadata you pull and then using this new name field, trying adding that at a sort of a fixed or a sort of a fixed value. Um, you know, that might only apply to images provided they were taken in exactly the correct order, because obviously when you go to number these elements, it's not going to miss any number. You can't like skip over something. Um, but yeah, it's just a unique, I, I, I would have to sort of play around within the tools and see what's possible within there, but there's, there is likely a way to, to sort of apply, up, apply that, that, fu that function to it. Um, yeah. Image attributes. I'd have to have to have to look around anyway. Um, maybe for that specific question, uh, Alan, maybe send me an email and I can ask our developers to see if they know more. Um, but there is, I'm sure, a way to sort of apply that, uh, that similar to that, that effect. Um, I just want to find out conclusively instead of, um, you know, uh, puttering around and, and, and uh, wasting time in the workshop. So. Um, so in this case, like I said, I'm just applying these different effects. So I've applied a template, I've applied a case change, and I've removed text uh, based on sort of a position in my, uh, my new naming convention. Um, and yeah, and this is just a really uh, functional way to go through the process of renaming. And then when I'm happy with this, so in the case that I, I have in this, I have my um, numbered images, 001 all the way to 050, uh, smart to indicate it was taken from a smartphone and then they were all taken in Canada. What I could do is I could actually go through the process of saving this, um, this default, this preset, which could be as simple as uh, mobile Canada and hit okay. And then, so if I'm ever in the process where I need to move some more images over um, using my, uh, my mobile sync, I will now I have a naming convention that I can reapply in this case. And I can hit rename. And once I hit rename, it's going to go through the process of re renaming all those images. And you can see that based on this bottom section here, which indicates the name of all my files. So like I said, a batch rename is a uh, very powerful tool that enables you to create a bunch of these criteria and then run these criteria in an order. And uh, you can reorder those criteria or even delete entire criteria or add new criteria 
uh, based on whatever you want your template to be. 90% of your the users might just, in this case, they might just set up a template that they like, that's a simple naming convention, not adding any necessarily any metadata or even changing any case uh, or anything like that. Just setting up a template on its own might be helpful to you. And so uh, it's, it's very powerful. Uh, yeah, uh, Joy, uh, you can definitely enter the, looks like you can enter the bit, uh, date taken based on EXIF. Okay. Oh, people keep on asking about this. Uh, it's uh, ACDC Mobile Sync is the name of um, the application. So that's what you'd be looking for in the Google Play um, or the uh, App Store. Um, so Geo uh, started auto detect within batch um, rename, uh, was just looking at whatever value already exists within the file, uh, whether it be the name or some sort of metadata properties to determine what that number would be. So when I say started auto detect, it's just looking at file names or metadata for that sort of information. And then it's uh, re uh, replaying that for you. Yeah, it's really effective, Michael. It's a really good application. And in the case of batch renaming, because my phone is going to give my images uh, ridiculous names that I'd never wanted in, um, in, in real life, then going through the batch renaming pro process is pretty fast. Um, Okay, so batch rename is one of the features that I'd really recommend playing around with. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, get to some of more of these questions, re-batch rename uh, later to the end. I just want to keep the momentum and move on to the next, next function. So the next function that I really recommend is, okay, so uh, batch developments. So just out of curiosity, how many of you are familiar with batch developments, uh, making batch development presets? Uh, cause batch development presets is what I'm going to be covering today. I've talked about it lots, but I also want to just get a feel for how many people. Oh yeah. Okay. So lots of people are not familiar, <laughs> which is great. So this is going to be mind blowing. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, there's a couple of you and, uh, Joe, I, uh, I apologize. This is new information, but okay, sweet. So there's most of you are not familiar. Okay. So this is really cool. So I'm just going to go into an image, okay? So we're going to briefly exit manage mode to talk about batch developments. And uh, pay close attention. This is going to save you tons of time. Um, so I'm going to explain what we're going to do first, and just so you have a, a, a foundation, and then we're going to go through the process. Um, batch development presets enables me to make a development in develop mode so I can change some criteria like the lighting qualities, or I can change, um, you know, I could change my image to like black and white, or I could adjust some, uh, some sort of uh, blur or add uh, noise reduction, a variety of different lighting adjustments. Okay. And then what I can do is I can create a preset that acknowledges those changes. So it says, okay, so this is a preset that adjusts this light accordingly and maybe makes a black and white adjustment to our image or something like that. And so what it gives me the ability to do is once that preset is saved, when I'm back in, um, when I'm back in uh, manage mode, I can select a group of photos that contain similar lighting qualities that I want to repair in the same way. So a good example of this, is um, for those of you that might do uh, family photography in, sp in the exact same location under sim similar lighting situations, perfect. You can make one batch development and then run it on all of them. The other thing you can do is you can, um, if you're like a wedding photographer and you're taking thousands of photos and you wanna apply the same adjustment over a variety of images, right? Um, this is really powerful. So it gives you the ability to run that application on multiple files. Okay, let's just go into an image. It really doesn't matter what we're doing here, just to showcase what I mean. Let's go into this one right here and I'll go to develop. Uh, so develop is going to uh, give me the ability to adjust this image. So obviously the midtones in this could come up. We can make a couple different adjustments to this image. Uh, so let's go to, let's say light EQ. So light EQ is on this left side in develop mode. And we're just going to bring up the midtones, and maybe we 
bring up the shadows slightly and just slightly reduce the highlights. So I can just bring up the foreground in my image slightly, okay? Um, let's say, let's also do a white balance adjustment to my image. So I'll just warm my image slightly, uh, take the temperature and move it up. And as I'm making these adjustments, what you'll notice is that to the left of the adjustment, there's this little blue icon that showcases that these adjustments are now active. So this is, this is important because we're going to reference this in a moment. Um, if I wanted to, let's say, go to, um, I could even apply something like a, 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 a photo effect. So I could apply something like a sepia tone or uh, let's see here, like a, let's pick like process. And I'll run my process photo effect with a reduced opacity. So I've got a couple different effects applied. Uh, maybe I wanted to, is there a fast way for me to just sort of showcase this in black and white? And let's see here. Um, I guess we could go into, could apply a split tone to my image if I wanted. I could force in a little bit of oranges in the highlights. I can make a variety of adjustments to my images. Um, so let's just say these four things are what I'm cha I've changed, okay? So I've made it a white balance adjustment. So let's deactivate that so you can see it before and after. So it warms my image slightly. I've made a light cue adjustment, which adjusts the sort of lighting in the foreground. I have made a slight effect on my image, uh, just that uh, process photo effect. And then I have uh, applied a subtle split tone, which adds a little bit gold to, in this case, the highlights in my image. So I have four effects being applied to this image. This could be whatever you'd like. Um, you know, like I said, this could be applying a effect for uh, um, for like those uh, wedding photography images, whatever you've done to your image. What we can do is once we're happy uh, with those effects, so here's a before and here's an after, what I'll go is I'll go to this little adjustment development settings icon up at the top left-hand corner. And what I wanna do is I want to save this preset. So let's say I'm happy with this. I'm going to apply this effect to multiple images. Let's save this preset, okay? So it, this is gonna bring up in this, this, uh, this huge checklist, okay? So there's a couple ways to view this checklist. Uh, the most effective way, in my opinion, is to just select all, okay? So when I select all, it's going to apply all of the adjustments that I have activated. So um, select all is going to omit nothing, but in this case, it's really only adding white balance, light EQ, effects, and split tone, okay? Now, I can choose these as well, specifically, but it's the same as if I go to select all. The difference is when I don't want to include this process photo effect, okay? So when I don't want to include something, what I'll want to do is I want to go through and I want to uncheck it. So I could go to select all, and then I don't want to include that process effect. So I'm going to remove photo effect from my list. Um, George asked, is it adaptive and applies relative or should you apply it only to almost identical photos that have the exact same lighting? Well, it depends on what your outcome you want. I think like if you're referencing one, I mean, these photo effects, right, George, or sorry, this development, doesn't necessarily have to be for images that have the same lighting uh, qualities. For example, the photo effect that we could apply is something as simple as, well, okay, I want to make my image black and white. Well, that doesn't really care too much necessarily about the um, quality of the first image, unless you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of those, those, two, different, those two images. So I guess the answer to the question is, it really depends on the photo that you're working with. But I would definitely use what I've described in this case for images that have similar lighting criteria. And the, the reason why is because you know how it's going to affect your image. 
ultimately it doesn't actually matter because develop mode is totally non-destructive. <laughs> so when we go to make this, uh, this uh, preset and we apply this preset to our other images, something that's really important to note is that we can, we can revert these changes. Like we can go back, we can adjust these images and I'll show you how. Okay, so we're gonna make um, a preset that includes everything but that photo effect that I've omitted by unchecking it, okay? Now, again, I could do something very similar to this. I could just unselect and I could go, okay, well, we have a white balance adjustment, nice. We have a light EQ adjustment, nice. Uh, we're omitting the photo effect and we have a slight split tone. So where is my split tone here? Split tone is under tune. And then it is right there, it's under color. So I'm gonna choose, uh, I could choose these three like I, I've shown right here, or I could just select all and unselect the photo effect. So let's name this preset. Uh, let's just call it, um, I don't know, uh, we'll call it mid-tones because that was the issue in this one. Uh, tones adjustment. So I'll just name it mid-tones adjustment and I'll hit okay, hoping that that already doesn't exist as a preset for me. Nice. So it'll give me this little pop-up showcasing that it has in fact been saved. So from here, I'll go back to manage mode. I sure, save this image. And uh, so earlier um, a, a user had asked, uh, do, 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 where is it? What these icons mean? So there's a couple different icons down the bottom left here and we'll talk about them. So this first icon means that the image has been developed. So that's a developed icon. Well, that matches up because this is the image we just finished developing. This second icon indicates that this image has a category associated with it. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later when we talk about categories and keyword sets. But if we look over on the right here, you can see that uh, this already has a category of places and Victoria applied. You can see because they're already checked. Uh, some of these will be all, I think these all contain the same categories. Um, the other thing it has is it has a little map icon. So images that are taken with your smartphone will already have a GPS. So I think actually, if I just click on this, it'll showcase exactly where it is. So here's Victoria. And then there's a couple different images that are taken in them. And then it showcases, uh, yeah, where that location is. I'll just close the map here. I think I can close it just by, oops, I'll just click here. So that's a little map icon. Uh, so that's what that icon represents. And then uh, this little uh, icon right here, uh, this just in indicates that when I upload an image with mobile, it gives me the opportunity to just click on this to rotate the file. Uh, there's other icons that will pop up. Uh, the icons that come to mind are the, let's see here, uh, embed pending metadata, which we'll showcase as well. Uh, and then there is, I think I'm missing one, which will come up. Uh, we'll talk about it as well. So this icon's been updated, okay, or so this image has been updated based on that uh, preset that we've created. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, select all these images, like these ones right here, right? So from 02 to 08. And then what we can do is we can navigate to batch develop. And batch develop enables me to select that preset that I've just created. So we can look through this list and see that I believe uh, this one was midtones hyphen adjustment. So I can select this one. And this was the preset that we just created. And I can run this development on all of my images. And as I do this, what you'll notice is a little development icon will pop up on all of our, pardon me, all of our images. And it'll run that effect on all of them, applying exactly the same lighting criteria to each one. Um, so now if we go into one of these files, for example, this last one here, if I go to the develop mode, right, we can reference the adjustments that this has made because they're right here. Um, so I have a white balance adjustment. Uh, in this case, the temperature has been increased. I have the light EQ with the reduced highlights, increased midtones, and slightly increased shadows. And I have a split tone of uh, just a slight orange hue that's been added to the highlights. And note, importantly, that the effect, the process effect that we omitted within the preset section is also omitted in the change of this image. So earlier, uh, when George asked a question about 
lighting conditions. And uh, so in the case that, you know, let's say this image did have radically different lighting conditions of that of our, maybe our first image. What we can always do is we can go into the image itself to undo those changes, or we can simply just uh, restore our image to the original uh, values that, uh, and that what, what that's gonna do is it's gonna remove those development presets uh, from the image entirely. Uh, and then note that I can go back to batch uh, develop <laughs> and I can go back to midtones adjustment and run it on that image again if I wanted to go through the process of rerunning it. So George, do you see how, well, you might already know this, but do you see how fluid that ability to adjust those development presets is? Let's have a look at some of these questions. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so BP, when you import from camera card, you can apply auto rotation so you don't have to deal with it later. Yeah, that's what that little icon means. Um, you can also, uh, if you care, uh, you can select all these images in this, um, this folder here. I wasn't gonna necessarily talk about this, but you can actually rotate and flip uh, from uh, as a batch action as well. So if all of your images uh, are, when you move them over from your camera, or if you just uh, copy and paste them from your, 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 um, your, sorry, your phone or your camera, then you can go through the process of just flipping them here. So you can uh, adjust the, the values, whether it be 90, 180, that sort of thing. And it'll flip them all uh, in that order. Um, let's see here. Uh, Bruno asked, uh, it seems, to, oh, you've answered somebody else's question. Thank you. John asked lots of batch tools. Can the batch develop tool be restricted to show only the ones you've made? Yeah. So the way we do that, let's see, I think we can just do something as simple as uh, if we go into develop mode itself, um, we can delete all of the, I think we can delete these presets. Oh, will it allow me to delete these presets. Yeah, so you can delete any presets that you don't like. Um, I think that's the only way to remove them from the list. I don't think you can just hide them technically. Uh, but if you don't have any intention to use any of these uh, sort of default presets the, the uh, software comes with, um, you can do, go through the process of deleting them that way. And that will remove them, I believe, from the uh, uh, batch development list. Um, okay. Looks like uh, that sort of indicates the, the batch development function. So I think batch development uh, and creating batch development presets is, is honestly one of the most powerful things that AC, ACDC does. Uh, and there's a similar function uh, that we're gonna talk about in a little bit called actions and that applies to adjustments made in edit mode rather than develop mode. Uh, very powerful as well, but it gives you a little bit of different um, uh, uh, editing functions. Let's just answer some more questions before we go on here. Uh, rotate and flip should uh, work on your raw files. It'll be uh, added to a, um, the adjustment will be, I believe, added to a, um, a sidecar file. So whenever you go to ad make adjustments to a raw file, uh, a sidecar file is created because raw files in of themselves are unwritable and not directly editable. So ACDC, the way it treats raw files is it looks at them and it says, okay, well, how do I rotate this? Well, I'll create a secondary file that whenever I'm referencing this raw file, will look in this folder and it'll pr basically produce that. So you should be able to rotate raw files. Uh, that definitely shouldn't be a problem. Um, so Richard asked, You've done lots of work to files. Will uh, these edits only be saved as an ACDC file or as JPEG also? I'm not quite certain what you mean, uh, Richard, but I can say these images that I took on my camera are all JPEGs. When I go to develop these images, um, what it's going to do is it's just going to write directly to the JPEG. If these were raw files, like I said, they would be written into that sidecar file and the original file would only be referenced um, when sort of showcasing those adjustments. Uh, if these, if I was editing this, these images in edit mode itself, I would absolutely save an ACDC file. And the reason why is because that file type will allow me to non-destructively interact with my image uh, in the future if I need to make any adjustments. Develop mode in of itself is completely non-destructive. So totally non-destructive. Um, yeah, I think you can, Bill. Let's have a look. Um, 
If I go into my image here, one of the functions that we can do under geometry is lens correction. So I can apply a lens correction and let's just make sure we can save that preset. I'm not sure if we can, let's find out. Yeah, looks like you can. So if you go to lens correction and then you co uh, correct based on your uh, specific uh, camera, what you can do is you can go to save development preset and you can just click uh, lens correction provided there weren't any other edits. And then you just name, I would uh, name lens correction in the camera itself and then hit okay. And then when you go to enter, um, when you go to look in your, your folder, you can just lens correct all those images at the same time. Does that answer your question, Bill? Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, Wayne asks, thanks. Batch rename might get me to use ACDC Mobile. Awesome. I've been using import from disk SD. That's fine. You can totally do that too. Deleting the images after importing makes sense. When uh, SC equal, oh, okay, back. I had unable to display and have a format SD in my Sony camera to remove this issue. Is it with deleting images not doing a full job to delete these files? Um, okay, so when you when you have a uh, sort of like a hard drive, right, an external drive, and then you connect that external drive to your computer, um, and you take the images, uh, or rather you edit the images directly on the external drive, it's going to give you a note, right? And that note is uh, telling you um, that uh, the, these adjustments can be added to the database, but the images will not be, once you disconnect that hard drive, the images will be, uh, will sort of operate as uh, called orphan files uh, when you go to remove the hard drive itself. And so uh, that those orphan files are basically, uh, uh, ACDC knows that it's made developments to an image like this, but it just doesn't know where that image is anymore. So it'll save a thumbnail, I believe, that sort of showcases that image. When you try to open it up, it'll say you can't open it because it's an orphan file and it doesn't know where the file is. Uh, so what you're seeing could potentially be, Wayne, those orphan files. Uh, and this is just because um, of that in trying to interact and uh, make, uh, I guess, keyword adjustments or developments in some way to something that existed on a hard drive. Uh, ACDC definitely wants you to work off of a hard drive, so or rather a... Um, you know, not a, an external drive. It wants you to work off of a one hard drive. And so that's a, it has a preference on how it works with those files. So in general, what you want to do is you'd want to copy the files you plan on editing in some way and moving them over to that hard drive. Uh, okay, so it sounds like an import. Um, yeah, I'd have to double check with our, our, our developers and ask a question of that. Um, because I'm not necessarily certain what's happening there. Um, so email, email me. Um, okay, let's continue on. Um, so that represents, so what we've talked about so far is we've talked about two different batch functions. So we've talked about batch rename and we've talked about batch developments. Um, and, uh, Oh, Wayne, to answer your question, uh, can you download new lens correction files? I believe that is the case because ACDC goes through the process of updating a couple times every year uh, with our, our product, and they, they add new lenses to that when they go through the process of updating. So I believe that when you, if you, if you, you can uh, download a, a concurrent uh, version from our website, or the most, uh, most updated version from our website of ACDC, and it'll... Um, it'll have those, uh, those lens correction profiles. Uh, we generally save, send out an update message to show, to tell their users what has been updated. Um, I'm trying to look in just Q and A, but everybody seems to be putting their questions in chat. So, <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about search siphon. So that would be my next sort of uh, tip for ACDC. I'm gonna open up um, um, my, a different uh, folder here. And we're going to showcase what uh, search, search Siphon does. So generally, when you use this search bar here, um, uh, ACDC 2021 does have a develop mode in Pro and, um, and also in Ultimate. Uh, Home is uh, the only software that does not contain develop mode. Uh, so you might be thinking of that. 
So there's this uh, top bar here. And if I turn on, uh, if I just use search, right, um, with uh, without clicking on this icon right here, this search siphon icon, uh, if I search for something, say I search for ocean, right? What it's going to do is it's going to bring me up uh, images in my um, in my on my computer that have ocean as a keyword or name. So if I look at these images, if I open up the keyword panel, you can see that ocean is selected for these ones. In fact, actually, I can check everything at the same time and see that ocean has been checked for all of these images. Um, so that's a really cool way for me to just bring up one image based on some sort of criteria. So if I do another one like sunset, for example, you can see that I can bring up all my images on my computer that have, again, that's that criteria, which it looks like in this case, all of these have a keyword of sunset. Does everyone see, uh, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at this keyword here, this little panel right here? I'm seeing that all of these images have some sort of criteria that I'm searching for. Does that make sense for everybody? Nice, thank you, Jeff. So this, whenever I enter a new criteria here, okay, like sunset or night, for example, let's see what happens if I bring up night, um, I'm getting new images. So uh, the, this is, uh, I'm basically making a catalog search right here. So what's being presented in the center here is not any particular folder per se. Um, uh, there's no uh, folder that's being presented necessarily. It's just that any image that contains on my hard drive, this criteria, which is the night keyword. Uh, Francesca asked, what is the difference between, oh, I think you mean cat category and keywords. Um, they're very similar. Uh, keywords can be, um, categories are sort of like overarching criteria uh, for an image and keywords are, uh, can be, um, I guess in this case, uh, can be applied uh, and uh, both of them can be applied hierarchically. So if I wanted to create a subcategory within places or if I wanted to create a sub key keyword, um, they're very similar. I'm just trying to remember, I think keywords are the ones that can be uh, are, are viewed within the ACDC metadata field. So keywords are viewed, uh, but our categories are not necessarily assigned to this ACDC metadata por portion. But when I'm searching for them using uh, this sort of criteria, let's see if I go, I, th I think if I go places, it'll just show me everything that is, has that keyword here. So in this case, I'm searching for, yeah, something that is, a, that is listed as this place. But what I'm doing here, okay, uh, by searching for places or sunset or whatever, is very similar to me uh, doing the same thing by clicking on the places category over here, which is listing everything in my directory that has the key, uh, has the category of, of places. Okay, so when I do this, uh, I'm searching for a whole list of images. Now, the cool thing about this, okay, is there's this little button to the right of it, which is, it sort of siphons the search. So when I've made a search, in this case, places, okay, what I can do is I can further refine within this, um, this criteria. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna search for something different, but it's gonna maintain uh, the overarching uh, thumbnails criteria. So if I go, I've searched for places, I'm gonna search ocean now and hit okay. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a much shorter list, okay? And what it's showing me now is uh, places uh, right here that also contain a keyword of ocean. Uh, now maybe I can do one, I can do one more. And if I look up uh, sunset, it'll continue, this is every image in my, um, in my entire hard drive that have the following criteria are listed as a category, a place, uh, are, uh, have ocean, <laughs> and then on top of that are also uh, sunset. Um, so this is, uh, these are these three things. And so what it's doing, as soon as I've searched for something, when I turn on this, um, this uh, uh, search siphon, what it's doing is it's searching underneath that criteria for anything that was contained within that same search. 
So I'll turn it off and let's just go back to a different folder here. I'll go back to my pictures folder. So if I'm in the pictures folder itself, this landscape folder, I turn on this criteria. So the search siphon. So it's only going to contain images that are in within this. And then let's look up uh, building. Oops. Um, let's do something different. Uh, oh, maybe it's because I need to start with this actually. So if I go buildings, there we go. I think I just misspelled the criteria. That must be it. So I go buildings. So that's one. And then if I go add ocean uh, as a secondary criteria, it's going to showcase all of the images that I just searched that also uh, contain ocean and buildings. So my point with this is, is it's a way for you to search for something and go, okay, well, I'm going to add another criteria to that, uh, something else that I've added as a keyword or something. And it's going to show me, I'll, well, okay, I'll add buildings to that. And then now I can see all the images that contain both ocean and buildings in it by using this search uh, siphon function. By default, this isn't turned on. So when I search ocean, right, it's just going to show me all my ocean images. Oops. When I search uh, buildings, it's going to show me all my buildings images. It's only when I go through the process of siphoning that it says, okay, well, I've got this locked in. What other criteria am I looking for? That's a good question, John. Let's find out. Uh, maybe if I go buildings, let's try plus first. Uh, yeah, totally. That works. This is actually, I wonder if and works too. That'd be cool. And ocean? No, but plus works. What about buildings minus ocean? Nice. That looks like it works too. So you can play around with that. Okay, Francesca, we're getting to that. <laughs> we're not there yet. Um, maybe now would be a good time to talk about that though. Uh, I'm going to just search up and just a reminder, if you have questions, the Q and a panel is the place to be. Um, so search finds a lot of things, Bruno search also finds the title, right? Of your image. So the image itself. Um, but, uh, in general, when you search using that search bar, it's referring to categories, keywords, and other IPTC metadata that has been added to your files. So that's what it's keeping in mind when it's searching there. I'm just, I've already gone through the process of adding a bunch of keywords and categories to these files. And so that's what's coming up when I'm searching there. But in short, uh, so IPTC metadata, ACDC metadata and titles. That's sort of what's being searched when uh, you go to look there. Um, okay. George asked, I thought the quick search would search in anything on a photo properties. Yeah, you might be able to get away with searching other things. So like certain values or like map uh, functions. I'm just more familiar personally with searching it based on categories and keywords. So if you know certain like location or it'll, it'll, um, it'll bring up, there might be a list actually too of all of the things that are searched for. Um, that might be something you email me and I'll find out more, more details of all the things that are, uh, that are searched there. Uh, George said, I have a big collection of images, about 300,000. So I don't know if there's a limitation to the size of the catalog. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, there isn't, it, so what's going to maybe slow this process down is if you haven't browsed those folders in the past, right? So when you browse a folder, uh, those thumbnails are added to your uh, database and that process of searching those big uh, for over big hard drives is, uh, is reduced uh, because you've done a little bit of the legwork to, uh, to browse automatically um, as you've gone into these folders. Uh, so it would probably bring it up fairly quickly. Uh, there might be a bit of a, uh, like a, a wait on uh, uh, folders that haven't been previously browsed. Uh, can the program differentiate pics as it does face recognition? Uh, not content yet, Carrie. That's something that's been talked about for future um, future uh, features, like adding, like being able to search for dogs or being able to search for specific criteria, like, I don't know, a car or something like that. It's not there yet, but that has been heavily talked about. Can the hierarchy get too deep? Um, no, I think the hierarchy can go for a while. Actually, I don't, I don't think there's any limitation on how many hierarchical keywords you can have. Yeah, I've done, I don't believe so, Joe. Um, 
Uh, Geo asked, what is the best practice for categories? In other words, can you get too granular? Well, we can talk about that now. Uh, and then we can talk about um, ACDC keywords to IPTC. I think that would be a good space to do it. Um, so in general, uh, let's talk about making, um, uh, yeah, let's go in here and see a good folder for this maybe. Um, the people folder. I'm going to go back into this mobile sync folder and we're going to talk about, we can add, we can add some things here. So I'm going to go up to my categories panel here and we can actually add a new category. Um, so I don't think there's any wrong way to make categories to be clear. Okay. But I like to think of it as the categories are the major criteria. In this case, when I was creating a category here, I've created the cities category. And I added a bunch of uh, cities either nearby or in Canada. So this was my major category. So in this case, it contained Victoria, Vancouver, Toronto, Seattle, Ottawa, Quebec City, Winnipeg, Calgary, and Montreal. And then, so I can add these categories to my images. Um, so I could click on, so these images were taken in Ottawa. You can see that they have the Ottawa category applied. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that this is too broad. Like some people might say, well, I'd actually rather this be a keyword, but then again, this is totally up to you, right? The keywords itself, I have different keywords. So I've created this urban keyword section here, which creates like sunset, sunrise, rain, fog, clouds, night, day, that sort of thing. And all of these, uh, when I click on them are applied to my image. And that's what brings up this little list right here. And this showcases my total keywords that have been applied to all my images. I don't think there's any wrong way to go through the process of creating keywords. And I don't think that you can be either too broad or too uh, narrow in your, in your category creation. I think what I would do is I think more over than anything, consistency is what creates a good strategy. So I would say determine what you want your consistency to look like and work from there. So in this case, in the categories of city or whatever, right, I've added these. Um, well, maybe I would apply that in similarly to these images too, or maybe these people that I have here would be categorized by, uh, okay, well, what kind of city are they from? Are these friends? Are they, uh, like, yeah, this could, we could create a new category right now, actually. So I'll go to the new category set here, and then maybe, uh, my major category, right? Uh, let's say, yeah, let's just go, I don't know, three by two, say. So I'll add, uh, uh, six total for people, I'll just, this will be my people category, okay? So yeah, let's say friends, uh, let's say uh, coworkers, let's say, um, uh, I don't know, uh, like um, spouse, uh, we could say, um, we could say, uh, um, uh, what's the word for when you uh, do, 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 uh, yeah, muse, I suppose, or study. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could do, um, you could do family and you could do, uh, let's say, uh, strangers. Um, and then what we could do is we could go through the process of adding this essentially this quick category panel to my list here. So I'm just going to call this people, hit OK. And now we have a brand new category that's been added. And so what we could do is then we can go through and add these categories uh, to this to this list here. Let's just say that these are all um, people that I've I've done photography for. Uh, so they're either strangers or muses. I don't have any family in here, let's say. So these are just all um, uh, you know subjects for for uh, sort of um, my photography art or whatever. So then that category is applied and you can see that these two icons will appear at the bottom left-hand corner here. Uh, the first one indicates that there is a category here. Uh, so now if I search for Muse, for example, well, it's gonna bring up that whole list, right? And the other thing is that they're listed in an embed pending uh, little bucket here. And so what this, this bucket means is that uh, these, this content, this, uh, this ACDC metadata has actually yet to be added to the file. So what I would do is I would click all my images in this case, uh, select them all, I would right click and I would go through the process of going to metadata and embed ACDC metadata. 
Now, I would just get into the habit of doing this because what this enables you to do is in the process that you lose uh, a database. Um, so you lose like pre-existing categories or keywords or, um, you know, elements uh, like face data, that sort of thing. What this enables you to do is actually reconstruct that because that information has been saved to the file. And so when you go to open it up in ACDC, you can uh, catalog these files. So if I was to go to, uh, let's see here, metadata or actually database, I could catalog these files. And then what it would do is it would search for any existing embedded metadata that is contained within these files. And then it could repopulate this categories list or this keywords list based on these images themselves. So we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here, but basically what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've added a new quick category set which is this people category here. And then all I've done is I've simply embedded that metadata. So now all of these people are considered both strangers and muses. So if I search strangers, for example, they'll come up in the same way that I did muse. Let's go ahead and add a new set of keywords. So uh, let's do it. Let's go click here and I'll go new quick uh, keywords set. And I'll call this one, um, Let's go, yeah, let's go three by three. Um, and then what we could do is we could name, so, okay, so uh, uh, brown hair, blonde hair, um, uh, red hair, for sure, black hair. I, oops, I could uh, say uh, uh, fair skinned, uh, dark skinned, olive skinned. I could go, um, what else could I add? Uh, stylish, you know, I could add a bunch of different people uh, kick uh, qualities that fall underneath that category. So the category in this case is strangers and muses. Um, and then this category would be, I don't know, something more specific to the person, say uh, glasses. And I could keep adding columns here. I could add another, uh, you know, more, more uh, rows so I can add more here. I'll just keep it three by three for now. And uh, what we can do is save this preset and we'll call it people again, hit okay. Oops, let's do, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, let's go um, attributes uh, and then hit okay. And then okay here, and it'll save that. And then that list is populated underneath here, which you can see right here. So I could go through this first row here and she could be categorized as uh, brown hair or whatever, um, and then like fair skinned. And then so those, uh, that person now has the, uh, the embed pen, petting uh, metadata uh, bucket pop up again, which showcases to me that these need to be then, uh, you know, embedded as well. So this is a very fast way for me to add uh, these functions to, or these uh, uh, keywords to it, to images is by setting these sort of quick keyword sets here. Um, rather than just going through the process of adding something new, like uh, just going to the top category here and adding like hoodie, for example. And now that's added to this one image, but it's not as relevant because I can't re reuse that. I would have to click here on this individual keyword rather than using the set to just sort of describe this person. So then when I look up a quality like, I don't know, uh, brown hair, boom, there they are. So that's a fast way to go through that process. Okay, so we have a bunch of keywords now, right, that we've attributed to this person here. So I, I believe uh, one of the questions earlier was, how do I go through the process of taking keywords that already exist on my image as ACDC proprietary metadata and moving them to a more general field, that IPTC field. I can show you this. This is very cool and quite easy. Um, let's just take a sec to have a look at some of the questions here. Oh, sure. Sorry, Gordon. Yeah, so the properties panel is right here. And basically, there's three tabs within properties panel. There's the organized panel, which contains categories, keywords, and then there's a sort of values here, the uh, rating and labels. There's the metadata field, which showcases what ACDC metadata is listed right here. There's an EXIF panel, which showcases a bunch of different met, uh, information here. Um, in this case, it's mostly camera information. 
And in the case of stock photos like these, they'll be blank or essentially the, the uh, camera info will be removed. But for all other images, like ones you take with your camera, this will be already pre-populated with a bunch of information. And then there's the IPTC field, which contains a bunch of non-camera oriented information. And so when I say moving ACDC metadata to the keyword panel, what we can do is we can take um, uh, keywords that exist within ACDC, like the ones that we've just created, and I can move these over to the IPTC column. Let's show you the IPTC column in documents here. So when I go to an image, uh, let's look at, yeah, let's look at one of these images here. So I'm gonna open up this image just in, uh, just using the folder tree here. And if I right click on my image and go to properties, you can see that if I go to, let's see here, details, there's gonna be a whole list of information. I believe it might be listed, it might not list it right now because we don't have any keywords associated with this image. But we're gonna come back to this and showcase that, oh, it'll be listed under tags, that's right. Okay, so let's move over some information. I'm gonna back up, go to pictures again here. Let's go back to some people here. Uh, let's make sure, actually, let's choose an image that has a bunch of keywords already associated with it. Let's pick an image. Yeah, sure, this one's fine. So I'm going to take this landscape image here, this landscape 06 image, and what we're going to do is we're going to take all these ECDC keywords and we're going to move them over to metadata under the IPTC column here. So to do this, we need to create a preset. I'm going to go to this little section here and I'm going to manage presets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this keywords field, okay? So this is the IPTC content, right? This shows essentially the exact same list that you see here, oops, is listed right here. Same content. So if I go to this keyword section and I click this little arrow here, I can insert metadata and I can choose metadata, right? So in this case, I can choose ACDC metadata, which is what we want. We wanna take that ACDC metadata that we have right here and move it into the keywords field under IPTC. This is gonna be viewable to anyone who doesn't have ACDC, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see ACDC metadata and I wanna add keywords. So ACDC metadata keywords to IPTC keywords. So I'll click that, hit okay. And then it lists it right there. So what I can do is now I can save this preset. So I'll say uh, ACDC keywords. Uh, I believe this might already exist on my list here to IPTC keywords quick action. And I'll hit OK. And then what I'll do is I'll hit OK again, and this will save this preset. So what this is gonna do is if I run this, this preset, so it's just created here, I, I created that preset. If I run that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna populate ACDC metadata keywords in this keyword field and I'll hit apply. And then now those keywords are listed. So architecture building ocean spring Turkey, right? If I go to organize, you can see that architecture building ocean spring and Turkey are all listed in here. So those are now moved to the IPTC field here. And when I hit apply, okay, when I hit apply, that's when they're saved to the writable file, okay? So let's go back to our folder tree here and find this file, and we'll see that that IPTC information has now been Im uh, embedded in the file. So let's go to my landscapes folder. That was number six, which was my image that we just moved. If I right click on that and go to properties and bring up details, under tags, you can see that my information has been added. Let's see here. So architecture, building, ocean, spring, and Turkey have been added to the file. And the reason why I'm showing this to you in folder uh, is because this is information that has been added um, that I can see on any computer that doesn't have ACDC installed. And I wanna make sure that that distinction is understood because it's important in this case 
because not all ACDC metadata is viewable unless the user has a version of ACDC installed that they can sort of see that information. So this is valuable to, that creating that preset is valuable because it enables me to move those keywords into a field that is more recognizable to the average user. Um, so let's have another look at some of these questions here. We're going to get to more of these. Oh, Gio asked about sub keywords. So when I move over keywords uh, in ACDC, um, what it's not going to do when I move it over to that IPTC column is it's not going to maintain any hierarchy. So how keyword hierarchies work, okay, is if I right click buildings, for example, and I say new keyword, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me the ability to create a sub keyword within the current selection under buildings. And then I can go, I'm gonna brutalize this. I wanna say Mediterranean, Mediterranean. <laughs> That's definitely not it, but you got my point. Um, but I could list that here, hit okay. And then I could apply a sub keyword in addition to buildings. So uh, that would be listed uh, underneath the building section here. So this is a sub keyword. So when I was talking about sub keywords, that what I, that's what I mean. And so if I was to search that same uh, criteria, very poorly spelled, uh, I could bring up that exact image based on that sub keyword in the same way that I would search for any other keyword. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, Geo. So basically when you go to uh, right click your image, you have the ability to add a new keyword and that can create a sub keyword like that. You can choose or you can just create a new top level keyword. Um, yeah. No hair. No hair was certainly an option, Gary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, George, can you customize the EXIF or IPTC panels to show more fields as it doesn't display all the fields? Um, it's a good question. Uh, all EXIF. Oh no, that just showcases, right. Yeah. I don't believe that you can add new, new, uh, fields to this. I think the fields are hard set. Uh, it, you can reduce what you see. So you can see all EXIF, all IPTC. You can see the metadata. I wonder if there's anything else that you can add. Oh, my bar, my apologies. Yeah, you can add more fields. Okay, so if you go to this bottom section here where it says manage metadata views, and then you select the criteria that you're looking for, by default, all of the CDC metadata is, is listed. But if you were to go to EXIF and then specifically camera info, it looks like you can click it to add more fields if you wanna see them. So there's a whole bunch that are actually omitted currently from view. And the same is the case for IPTC, I believe. And in fact, there's entire content, uh, entire lists that aren't look like they're turned on here. So it looks like you can add or uh, remove new criteria based on what you want to see. So hopefully that answers your question, George. Um, Ted asks, can this interact with facial recognition also? Currently, you can't move. Uh, wait, can, I believe that's the key. I don't think you can add. So. Currently, the way it works is that facial recognition doesn't add keywords to your uh, images, I believe, because I don't think you can move your, uh, your, yeah, there's nothing, the facial recognition isn't creating its own, like it isn't adding to your keywords panel. Um, so I don't believe you can take facial recognition information and move it to an IPTC column right now. We're not there yet. Uh, Tom asked, how do sub keywords map to the embedded metadata compared to the top keywords? Yeah, so just as I described, Tom, um, so when you go to uh, when you go to move your sub keywords, your ACDC sub keywords to that IPTC column, it's just going to treat it flat. So it's going to flatten all of them and it's just going to list them one by one. So there is no IPTC hierarchy that can be maintained. That's sort of a feature of ACDC. So when you go to move that over using IPTC, that hierarchy is going to be removed and it's just going to flatten all of those into a list. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, can an image be more than one category? Absolutely. We showcased that actually earlier when we were looking at those images under people, right? If I go back to organize 
categories, you can see that my images here are both muses and strangers, which are both two separate categories that I've created. So yes, um, anonymous asks, what's the difference between embedding and writing to IPTC? Okay, so ACDC metadata requires that you embed it to the file. So when you create ACDC metadata, like that keyword, for example, so let's go here, let's add brown hair, and it creates this little embedded pending metadata box. When I go to metadata and I embed metadata, this gives me the abil ability to uh, catalog this image in the future to re-add that keyword or whatever I've, uh, in this case, embedded, okay? Writing IPTC is a bit different. So it, it works functionally very similar. So let's go back to all default metadata in view and look at our IPTC here. So when I add a keyword here, like uh, I'll just add it manually, brown hair, right? Um, so when I go to apply this, what that's doing is it's writing it to this writable file. So it's literally adding this, this the, the words brown hair to that tags field under the properties section. So when I apply that, uh, that's where this is added, okay? Now, this is instantaneous provided the file is writable. So uh, you can see whether or not a file is writable. Naturally, all JPEGs will be writable. But if you ever are looking at your file here and navigate down to file, there is a little read only section. If this read only section is selected, you won't be able to make any adjustments to these files, whether it be metadata or editing them or whatever have you, because they're read only, meaning they're viewable only. They're not something you can change the content of. So if there's ever an instance where you, oh, you can't add new keywords, for example, those might be grayed out. Uh, just double check to see if this read only is checked, because if you uncheck this read only, it might enable you to edit those fields. Um, so there is, so those are basically the difference between the two anonymous. Um, okay, let's see if there's a, oh man, we haven't even covered all the things I wanted. There's so many good questions here. So we've covered batch rename, we've covered batch develop, which covered search uh, siphon, we covered ACDC keywords to IPDC. Um, we've covered category and keyword sets. I won't be able to cover all of these things today because we've already run an hour and 15 minutes here. So I'm gonna put up the, uh, I'm gonna give the vote for everybody for the last one we cover. So would you like me to cover actions, catalog chevrons, uh, or auto advance? Um, these are your options. <laughs> For those are the three uh, that I have remaining. Vote now. I'll try to cover these again in a new workshop. I had no idea that there was gonna be so many questions today. Chevrons, actions, actions. Whichever, <laughs> love that. Okay, I think actions is one clearly, clearly ahead, okay. Um, so we'll cover actions and it's more, it's more complicated of the two. So it's probably a good one to cover rather than the chevrons. Okay. So let's cover that. Thank you for your votes, everyone. So actions is a hub. Okay. Uh, I, I'll bring it up here. There's something called the actions browser. And what the actions browser enables you to do in manage mode is apply a um, uh, developments uh, well, actually edits, edits to your image. So I'm just gonna, and by default, it's gonna come with a variety of different um, presets, right? So the same way that batch development comes with a bunch of presets, actions does as well. So I'm just gonna navigate for reference to the black and white one. And you can see that what this does is it showcases a bunch of previews of what the image will look like after the action has been applied. And you can see all these different action and it changes the look of, and feel of the image. So actions are something that you can record in edit mode and run this application in, uh, in, in manage mode. So actions browser has a bunch of different elements of it. So like I said, it's got these little drop down bar here. 
And these drop down bar shows you a bunch of different things that are already available to you. So there's going to be a bunch of, um, you know, presets that are going to come. Like uh, I looked under detail here for blur, clarity. Uh, I have remove noise, sharpen. All of these are, uh, are, are something that I can play on my image. So just let's, for reference, let's play a black and white adjustment to my image here. So I'm going to click play on my image. And what it's going to do is at the very bottom, so it keeps the original image, okay? At the very bottom, it's going to create a new image. And that's a edit of my original image there, except it's black and white. It looks exactly like uh, what, it, what the preview showcases. So Actions Browser contains a couple of different things because we can create our own actions. So by naturally, uh, we can create a new category and we can add to that category. So I'm just going to call this category literally, literally a uh, new category. Oh, I already have one. Nice. Let's call it new, let's call it Mar uh, March 2022. Hit OK. And then I can look under this action browser uh, section here under this dropdown and see that March 2022 has been added as a category. But you'll see that there's nothing in it because we have yet to add anything. So we can create a new category here and create new actions within this. I also have the ability to delete categories. We'll get to that in a sec. Let's go into an image and edit an image. So I'm gonna select a, let's just select a image that I think could change subtly. Actually, this is a perfect example. Let's go into this image and bring it into edit mode. So now we're gonna make a quick edit to this image in the same way that we did a quick development when we were showcasing batch develops, okay? When I'm in my image here, you can see that I can also bring up actions. It's this little bar right up at the top here. I can bring up action browser in the very same way that I brought up uh, it in manage mode. You can see that all of these same black and white filters are available to us. And just as the March 2022 category is still empty here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start recording an action and then I'm gonna save that action to play it on other images. So I'll do, hit the little record button here and you can see that it's now recording and I've got this list that appears here. So what I can do is let's add a uh, adjustment. So I'm gonna go to vibrance and I'm going to change the hue slightly on my image. Whoa, very trippy, slightly, just like that. So change the vibrance on my image and I'll add a, uh, let's say a light EQ, actually let's add just a curves, curve to my image. And I'll bring down the shadows and the highlights, I'll bring them up slightly. So we've made a very dramatic change to our image here. And then maybe what I'll do finally is I'll adjust the white balance. Whoa, that's so, so bright. But the point is I've made a bunch of just different adjustments to this image. What I can also do is I can go to the base image here uh, and maybe I'll just add like a really crazy special effect just to really showcase this. Um, yeah, let's add like a Dober effect and I'll reduce the opacity and the frequency until I can sort of just see the effect. I'll hit done. So there's my, my image. I've made a sort of a destructive change with the, the Dober uh, adjustment. And then I've got a bunch of different adjustments on here, a vibrance, a curves, and a white balance. And we can actually see that because our recording matches that. So we recorded, we added a vibrance, we adjusted that vibrance. Uh, we added a light EQ, we deleted that layer, we didn't like it. We added curves, we adjusted curves. And then finally, we added a white balance, adjust the white balance, and then added a Dober adjustment to our image. So this is our currently recorded segment. So let's say I'm happy with this image and I wanna save this action. So I'm gonna to go to the stop recording button up at the top here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna prompt me to save this action. And as you can see, it notices my most recently created category. So I'm gonna call this uh, Dober plus, uh, plus, highlight and save it to the March, 2022 category. So I'll click save. And then what I can do is with that saved, I don't even need to 
honestly save this image. I can just discard it if I wanted to. But the cool thing about this is now that I have that action saved, I can go to March 2022 and you can see that it is now populated with the Dober Plus highlight. Or I could go to the actions browser itself and see that, that it's underneath there as well. And then what this enables me to do is select a whole group of images like these right here. And I can actually play that effect uh, on these images. So I can go up to actions here. I can go to the March 2022 category here and I can play it. The other thing I can do is I have a couple little options here. So I can run the options and it gives me the ability to change the file output. So if I wanted to save these as TIFF files or PNGs or ACDC file formats, I can. And then it looks like what I can also do is I can force overwrite the files if I wanted to, or I can rename those modified images and place within the source folder, or I can place the modified images in a following folder. And then what I can do is I can literally put it into a brand new folder in that same landscape folder. So I can create a new folder called um, adjustments. Uh, actually it's called uh, Dobra adjustments to be sure. Hit okay. Oops. Make sure it's selected. There we go. And then what I can do is I'll hit okay. And that's gonna save that adjustment to make sure that it, it sends it to directly to this folder here. And then let's find those same images here. And let's run that uh, that uh, Dober plus highlight action on these files. So I'll hit play and it's going to show me the progress meter. And when it's done showing me this progress meter, what it's going to do is it's going to populate that folder with those images. So I can navigate down to this folder and you can see that that action has been applied to all of these images now. So I can view that effect on what it looks like on these new images. So this is like a pretty powerful tool and there's some things that you can do in actions, uh, or sorry, there's something that you can do in edit mode that you just can't do in develop mode. So this gives you the ability to take those functions in edit mode that uh, are sort of unique and uh, essentially create a, an effect that's very similar to that of the batch development function of develop mode. Does that make sense to everyone how this is like a very powerful tool as well and gives you a lot of functionality very similar to that batch development? Uh, this is really good for users that are more familiar with edit mode or would prefer to work in edit mode. Um, yeah, okay, so John asked a great question. So he said, I'm a little confused about the destructive change. I thought all of ACDC's edits were non-destructive. How can you tell if an effect will be destructive before applying? So this is a really good question. So I'm going to answer this question really quickly, John, and then I'll show you what I mean. So Develop mode is non-destructive. The entire mode is non-destructive, okay? Edit mode is destructive. Um, about half of edit mode is destructive and about half of edit is non-destructive. And I'll show you how you can tell. So I'll just go into an image in edit mode. So John, all of these adjustments that you see down here, these are non-destructive, okay? Layers and the adjustment layer panel itself are all non-destructive. This filter menu that you see on the left is destructive. So when you make changes to an image using these filters, these will, this will, this is a destructive change. Okay. So what you want to do, John, is you want to make sure to duplicate your layers before you make these filter adjustments. And the reason why is because that way you still have a base layer that you can reference that was the original. Now, importantly, if you are going to finalize your file, the only thing that really truly makes it non-destructive, even if you have a bunch of adjustment layers, you have to save your file as an ACDC file format. Because in edit mode, that ACDC file format is what contains all of the, the edits that you've made using adjustment layers and layers. That is uh, what enables it to be non-destructive. If you just save it as a JPEG or a TIFF, for example, what it's gonna do is it's gonna flatten everything down in that file, final file. And so you won't be able to come back to that image two months from now, three months from now and uh, make adjustments to it. John, does that make sense? Um, I really want to make sure that people understand like where edit mode is non-destructive and where it is destructive. He says you got it. Okay, <laughs> great. That's awesome. Okay, so Ted said, awesome, nice, absolutely, great, cool. 
Uh, Robert asked, when embedding metadata, does Ultimate 2022 only embed metadata in the open folder or does it embed any pending metadata? Yeah, this is a great question. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is instead of clicking on the image itself to embed the metadata, I'm gonna go back to thumbnails here. So all of these images, right? Uh, let's, they all have pending metadata. There's this little pending icon just down at the bottom left here. Okay. So what I showcased you previously is right clicking on the image, going to metadata and embed ACDC metadata. But this is only going to embed the metadata that I selected. Okay. Uh, what you can do to embed just anything on your, on your whole hard drive that hasn't been embedded, regardless of whether or not you've clicked on it or not, is you go to metadata, embed ACDC metadata, and then embed in all files. <laughs> and so what this does is this embeds everything. Um, so regardless of uh, how many items are, so it'll just uh, do the whole, whole thing. You can also turn on, I believe, uh, there might be a way to turn on that. Uh, Cause I know that if you go to, I think in options, there's a way to turn on a reminder at the end of, Let's see here, manage mode. Uh, Where's embed metadata? There's definitely a way to turn it on so that it checks it before you log out of the, uh, the software too. Uh, do, 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 do. Man, I wish I knew where it was. Uh, let's see here, edit mode. I'll have to double check where that is. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but there's a way to make it so that before you click the X button, if you have any pending metadata, it'll just make sure to save it for you. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question, Robert. Uh, Victor, can I apply exposure auto levels for a group of files in edit mode in batch? I think you might be able to use batch edit. So if I go to batch edit and you want to do auto exposure auto levels, so this is a really old tool that's sort of been phased out by actions. So obviously, Victor, you can just create that action, like I said. But if you want to batch edit, you can also try using this. Uh, auto levels. Yeah, it looks like you can apply an auto batch of auto levels. I would prefer if you use actions because I think it's a more uh, sort of a... Uh, more versatile tool overall. And it's sort of supported, whereas batch edit, I don't think is supported in the same way, but it looks like you can auto exposure, auto levels using batch edit. So have at her, have at her, Victor. Um, Mike asked, pick and choose serial actions. I teach uh, serial actions, rotate left, desaturation, serial actions. What do you mean, Mike? John says, it would be nice if there were a warning or ACDC automatically created a top layer, a suggestion for future version. Noted. Kizzy asked, is it going to be available online? That's okay. Yeah, Kizzy, yeah, it'll be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Brian asked, is edit versus develop mostly a preference since many of the operations seem to duplicate each other? No, it is not. Uh, it's an uh, area of much confusion and one that I've tried to cover a lot. Okay, so uh, there's a huge difference between the two modes. So edit mode is uh, for composition images. There's a layer panel. You have the ability to make masks and add new images on top of your pre-existing image. So it is for creating photographic art in addition to making uh, edits to your image. Develop mode is more of a raw editor in general. Uh, and it can only uh, work, you can only interact with one uh, image at a time. So in the sense that when you're developing an image, you can develop that image, but you can't actually add new images on top to create a composition. Uh, there's actually a video on ACDC that uh, on our YouTube page that uh, it's sort of just the one that comes up for, for new users uh, called the difference between ACDC ultimate professional and home that covers this in depth, but they're not the same at all. They're very, very, very different. Uh, they have a lot of the same functions in that develop mode. You can make exposure adjustments and edit mode. You can make exposure adjustments, but they're, that's about where the, uh, the comparison ends. Um, thanks on all the file metadata. I've been wondering for weeks. You're welcome, Robert. 
uh, how is batch mode different from action browser? Um, so uh, it's, again, it comes down to what you can do in edit mode versus what you can do in develop mode. And as I've just described, edit mode is a sort of a compositional editor. Um, but fundamentally, actions does sort of uh, result in the same similar uh, outcome to that of develop mode in the sense that you can make a series of adjustments, run those adjustments. Uh, so if you use edit mode more, obviously uh, get uh, familiar with actions. And if you use develop mode more, uh, just familiar with, with uh, batch, uh, batch developments. Thank you for moving that into Q&A. Okay. I'm going to switch back to answering some, some good, some questions in the, uh, in the, uh, Q and a panel here. Uh, Dean asked, what are chevrons? So I guess what I was going to say earlier is chevrons are these little uh, indicators on the catalog panel. So if I want to bring up images, like for example, muse, right. I can click on the chevron here. But what I can actually do is I can combine chevrons by clicking on the chevron itself. Um, and then I can combine it with uh, keywords and ratings. So if I want to see a place and I want to see all the places with a uh, rating of one, for example, then I can bring that up. So now I'm looking at places, but I'm also seeing all the places that have a rating of one. I can even add additional criteria like keywords, for example. Let's see here. I can add maybe like a, uh, let's say ocean. Let's add ocean. And so what that shows me is all the places in my entire hard drive, okay, with a keyword of places, with a rating of one, with uh, a keyword of ocean. So chevrons are used to combine categories in the same way that searching with the uh, an entire database, uh, the sort of the, the, the filter function does, in the sense that you can bring up multiple different criteria and every image that falls under that criteria. So in this case, places, rating of one, keyword of ocean. Does that make sense, Dean, that how you can use those chevrons to combine those functions? Awesome, yeah, sweet. Norman asked, what's the discount code you mentioned earlier? Oh yeah, let me re-enter that. So the discount code is uh, workshop all uppercase 2022. If you enter that in the coupon section in the store, it'll give you $20 off your purchase. And I don't think it's, I think it's just anything in the cart right now, or, or it's definitely the top three pr products for sure. So please use that coupon. If you have an intention to buy or maybe upgrade to a new software, please, please, please. It'll save you 20 bucks. Uh, Gio asked question for end of workshop. Thank you, Gio. Are there any plans of providing a mobile ACDC viewing app so I can get to my pictures remotely? One of the marketing positions for ACDC is so you don't have to scroll through thousands of pictures on your device, but you put them on your workstation, then they aren't available remotely unless you use a third-party product such as Synology Photos. Hey, Gio, can you send me an email um, with that suggestion? Because I, I send all of our suggestions to, um, to our developers. And if you think that there's a, a something that uh, that ACDC uh, could could promote uh, that would sort of uh, you know be good long term for the the company, uh, that's honestly something they'd be happy to read. Uh, and I I think like it, I think that's a great idea. Uh, it's just it's easier for it to come from a user than to come from someone internally because users are uh, like yourself are the ones that ultimately end up uh, you know purchasing the product, and that uh, that's really important for 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 uh, for promoting that. So if you send me an email, I will forward that to our department that deals with uh, suggestions uh, and that's the developers. So, uh, John says, just bought home ultimate. What's the quickest way of indexing my entire picture folder and how do I enable auto index for new images? John, can you send me an email as well? I know there's a way to do that, but I do need to check with the um, one of the developers because I'm not certain of it right now. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, Norman, thanks. Great workshop. Introduced to so much. You're most welcome, Norman. Thank you for participating. Bruno asked, my actions list is empty though. Is there a way to populate with some predefined actions? There is. I think this has been an issue with a couple users in the past, uh, and I've always directed to the, some, to the support team. So Bruno, you can email me as well, and I'll, I'll direct you to them, because I think there is a situation where the actions list is just like empty for some reason. I actually even had that issue one time. Uh, I mean, this is something too, provided that you don't have any like database issues currently, you might be even able to just re-download the product and it'll resolve the issue, but I can find out for you. 
Chio, thank you. You're most welcome. ACDC Mobile Sync asked me to display the QR code for my phone to record it. Where is it? Great question. Help. Um, where was that? I remember this. Okay. Uh, oops. Where is that sucker? Um, product support, customer support. New Quick shortcut. Um, mobile sync details. There it is. Okay, sorry. So it's under um, Miguel. It is under tools. Show ACDC mobile sync details. Scan this QR code. Okay. That is where it is. It's just under, uh, once again, tools, show mobile sync details, and this will auto connect for you. Um, yeah, there you are. Jim Watson said, always great, just added my metadata, hasn't, hadn't done it. So updated 22,000 files. <laughs> awesome, Jim. And just once again, so you understand, just in case in a, in a situation where you need to uh, catalog that information ever, you might not, but if it ever comes up, you go to database and catalog files. And then that's how you basically can pull EXIF and IPT set metadata in addition to ACDC metadata, including categories, keywords, tagged, and collections. And you can also check face data if you use that. You're most welcome, Dean, thank you. Got that. What's your email? A price at acdsystems.com. Once again, uh, coupon code today is workshop2022, all capital letters for $20 off at checkout. There you are, John. Uh, so why do you have two different ways of performing batch scripted changes? Okay, so you're referring to, George, uh, batch develop and batch edit. Uh, well, batch edit has been slowly sort of phased into actions uh, just because of some limitations with batch edit. Uh, and then batch development is truly uh, for uh, using just develop mode. And now why, um, why they've developed the two? Well, over the time, ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate has turned into a product that's kind of similar to Photoshop in that it's also used as a compositional editing software. And what I mean by that is it's a software where you can combine images together, like, like an image of your family, say, with an image of like a background. And then what you can do is you can use edit mode to sort of, uh, uh, you know, sort of remove uh, specific family members and then combine it with the background. And so you're just making a, a wholly new image with two images. So it's, it's truly is a composition editor. Whereas, uh, you know, develop mode in the past wasn't really capable of that because it's just designed to edit non-destructively individual files. So uh, as we've developed the editing functions within ACDC and it being more of a used for photographic art, um, that's uh, why we've created a new batch function uh, and using actions. Uh, and then so, yeah, and then so Dean asks in regards to Gemstone, right? So uh, Gemstone is a multi-document editor. And so basically it takes all of the power of edit mode and you're most welcome, Jim, thank you all the power of edit mode and your ability to, um, to create compositional images, but it also has a multi-document interface. And so what I mean by that is it mean, it, it, I mean is you can have multiple projects open at the same time and copying and referencing um, uh, different uh, uh, parts of those images from uh, from, from one file to the next. So, uh, the multi-document editor, uh, really moves, uh, ACDC in the, in, in a direction that we are creating, um, uh, like a, a product that is used, uh, for, like I said, those compositional edits and, uh, some really powerful, um, uh, adjustments that you can make to multiple images at the same time. Again, really moving in the direction of, uh, Photoshop, uh, forgive the comparison. Uh, Gigi, well, I heard you, Kizzy. I thought, oh, okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Freddie. You're most welcome. John, can you save the chat and Q&A, please? They should be saved in your Zoom folder on your computer. Lots of good stuff here. Um, I can see what I can do, John. Uh, Bruno, 
you have this database for this particular hard drive. Can you transfer this info and use these keywords categories with another computer? Yeah, so Bruno, if you want to save, okay, so what you do, you're most welcome, Nud, take care. Um, so what you can do is you can export your database, okay? So you can go through the database function, tools, database, export. So if you want to, uh, so say you have a laptop with ACDC on it and you want to utilize this same database, we'll simply export this database and just transfer that file to your laptop. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to convert your database um, uh, by uh, convert your database to that 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 uh, that database file on your your hard drive wherever it is, so you can take on your laptop and then you can uh, essentially import this database there, um, and that's basically how you could uh, create uh, that same you could use that same database on a new computer. Um, Bruno, does that make sense? Uh, everybody's chatting all of it. That's great. Uh, George says, so why do we have two different ways to perform? Oh, we answered that. Mark asked, last fifth attempt before emailing you, does rotation change the orientation rotation meta tag? Does ACC pay attention to that tag when displaying? Mark, I have no idea. I can find out for you, but I do not know. Um, please email me. Again, my email is aprice at acdsystemsystems.com. Uh, and coupon code again is workshop 2022. Dean asked, in future, will there be a way to remove all face tag suggestion boxes at once in a group photo with hundreds of faces where one needs to tag only a few people? Have you tried people mode, uh, Dean? I wonder if that will answer your question. Because I know what you can do is, so in this case, I have seven pictures of this woman, Emily. And what I can do is I can select all of these images and remove the face, basically deny the face from these from this this person. Uh, I'm not sure if that quite answers your question, but people mode was re is relatively new to uh, the the most recent product, and there's a lot of uh, cool solutions that this offers that uh, that the adjustments in view mode were not uh, were not as possible. Um. Okay, Kizzy asked, I have missed the beginning of this being, yeah, it will be on our YouTube page. I believe I, I answered this question, Kizzy, but yeah, it'll be on our YouTube page next week, okay? Um, so again, our YouTube page is uh, youtube.com forward slash ACDC Photo Studio. Go to playlists, and if you go to the workshop segment right here, uh, you can see all of them there. Okay, yeah, cool, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and then the other thing is, while you're on our workshop page on our ACDC YouTube channel, please subscribe because uh, we upload content to there regularly that answers cool questions. Um, and that's where we upload all of our workshops. So check that out. Also, for those of you curious about um, mobile sync, I recently did a workshop on a tutorial on workshop. Uh, and so that answers a lot of questions there. So it might be worth checking out as well. Um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, Claude, you're most welcome. Thank you. Anthony, thank you so much. Uh, awesome. I'm glad. Uh, Gordon, uh, car number blur here, faces. Oh, I think you can blur. Uh, you can blur in edit mode. Yeah, you can blur. You could use like a little, yeah, there's lots of ways to do that, but that would have to be for a new tutorial. Um, thank you, Jean-Luc. You're most welcome. Thank you, Ronnie. Like I said, it'll be uploaded on our YouTube page so you can watch it in full. Ted asked, will you include the other two in the posted video? Will you include the other two in the posted video? Oh, as in, well, we did cover, uh, I guess the only one that was really missing was auto advanced because we did cover the chevrons then. Um, I'll have to do a tutorial on it, uh, uh, Ted, uh, so I can cover auto advance in a, in a tutorial and then cover that. And that gives me some new content for, for tutorials that I need to produce. So, uh, but it probably won't be included in the workshop video. It'll just have to be a new tutorial. So once again, check out our YouTube page, subscribe to that, and I'll make sure to make that uh, tutorial within the next couple of weeks. Larry asked, where do I find photos I have sent from mobile on the computer? Oh yeah, sure. So in your pictures folder, okay, pictures folder, 
So on your PC, there's always that pictures folder. And what ACDC does is it creates a folder called ACDC Mobile Sync within your pictures folder. So when you move files over using Mobile Sync on your phone, this folder will be created for you and populated with that content, okay? So Larry, that's where you're gonna find your mobile photos, okay? And it's always in that location uh, unless you've gone into the settings in Mobile Sync and adjusted that. Uh, Bruno, awesome. Learned a lot. You're most welcome, John. Uh, Sanford asked, I don't think Mobile Sync works uh, if you're using a virtual private network. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah, I think you might not be able to. Um, I'd have to double check on that, but I'm fairly certain that's correct. Uh, it does require you to, it does require you to be using a, um, your, uh, you, to be logged into your Wi-Fi, uh, in your home Wi-Fi. Rudy, thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Dean, thank you. George, uh, interesting thing about mobile sync import is you can automatically create a subfolder for each camera. Sweet. Uh, what did Bruno say? <laughs> it's so long ago. Oh, I'm having trouble keeping up with the chat. There's too many things going on. Les asked, thank you. Very helpful. Can we create text with a transparent background? Can we create text with a transparent background? Yes. I'll show you how quickly. Image, um, uh, so opacity, transparent background, okay? Uh, let's say it's a 50% opacity on that. Let's just say zero. Let's take, we'll add text. So we'll add text here. I'm adding text, text to transparent. Oops, transparent. Uh, let's make it into a frame. Oh, that's definitely misspelled. Okay, text to transparent. And then I'll, uh, let's say we'll put it in the center there. So um, Les, what you're gonna wanna do is save this as an ACDC file if you wanna edit it. And then what you will also wanna do is you're gonna wanna save this file as a PNG, I believe. A PNG is gonna contain a trans the contain the transparency. Uh, I believe that will uh, save it as a transparency rather than uh, framing it as white, okay? Because if you save it as a JPEG, it will flatten it to a white background. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. Dean, uh, Bruno asked when next workshop is. I don't know yet. I have yet to schedule one, but I will schedule one soon. Um...